I, I didn't choose to keep the rasters. I was actually forced to have the rasters by prison Ascaris, especially the officer in charge of committed prison. Yes. Because every time we had just been arrested and uh, charged with prison. Yes. And of course, you know, prison involves the death sentence if you are found guilty. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, so when every time we went back to prison from court, we would ask for Vitana, the combs for combing our hair so yes. that it could look smart. But uh, for those years... Look smart in prison? Yes, everywhere. <laughs> Even in prison, people do look, want to look smart in For prison. What? <laughs> For what? Yeah, because, as in in prison. Because everywhere, I guess even in hell, there is smartness. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Um, so he would, he would refuse to give us the, comb. the combs to comb yes. our hair. And when we inquired, we found out that he was doing so because he wanted us to look like terrorists whose hair stood on head, on yes, the head. Yes, yes. And of course, we didn't want to look like terrorists because that we would give the courts is a conviction of us. Or oh, the so impression want really matters even in court? Yes, it does. Okay. If you go looking like a terrorist before mm -hmm. a judge, mm -hmm. you most likely nail you down. So you want to look the opposite of what they are port portraying you. So when they refused, because yes. they refused completely to give us the combs, uh, our hair started standing on end. Okay. And um, uh, we thought that it was doing us a lot of bad. Okay. Uh, until it grew into shape. Okay. And it started looking like Bob Marley's hair. Yes. At that stage, some young men and women had decided that... Uh, there was something revolutionary about the Rastas. So when they came to court, they came to court with, uh, with the drawings of us, okay. wearing the, particularly the, the Rastas, came out prominently, yes. which made judges very angry and the Ascaris also. Okay. So they started wanting to remove the hairs. Okay. But because we, have, we had already realized that the hair, the rasters, were kind of irritating or suggested some kind of victory or an ideology of, rad, of, of uh, radicalization, let me use that word. Yes. Uh, now they wanted to get rid of them. So uh, when they wanted to get rid of them, we insisted on keeping them and made a vow. Uh, especially me, I made a vow. The others also had their rasters. But for mine, I made a vow t uh, that I would keep it until the day Moy left quit power. power. Ah, that's a, that's, a very, very <coughs> that's a very insightful way to look, it at, uh, to look at it. And I think I've picked one thing from that. I didn't know that actually looks can influence a judge's decision. I don't know whether that's a thing for the past, because I believe it would have, if it worked now, Joey would be innocent by default. <laughs> yeah. And, and the treason, treason, I believe, is a very, very serious charge. And you know, most people throw his or my around uh, without it, knowing how. It matters a lot. If, if you look at um, the treatment of uh, black people uh, in the states by white judges, uh, your very color can lead to your conviction. Ah. When they see a black person, they see a criminal. Okay. When they see a white person, they think they are seeing somebody who is innocent. And so, so uh, of course, black people cannot wear their color off to look white, but they can fight for justice yes. for white for black people, okay. where they are able to go to court, not expecting uh, convictions and intimidations and whatever. They go to court proud that they are black people, 
and they want to know that they can get justice despite their color. And uh, speaking of uh, racial discrimination, sana sana, uh, I read one of one, an article about you where you talk about uh, facing when you sued the government. Uh, one of the grounds was uh, you faced racial discrimination from the food. <laughs> no, what they had in prison, it's not that they refused me to eat, although I love waru. Yes. That is for sure. Yes. It was a staple so food. for A class food versus? Yeah, but there are, there are food, uh, classific food was classified yes. into A, B, C, D. Yes. And uh, the food that we were getting was for, because the, 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 the classes were of Africans, Asians, and white people and Somalis. Okay. So uh, we didn't want to be put on a diet for Africans, although we were Africans, because it was it was the least it it was the worst okay. of you know they would just give you gali. Yes. If you were if you had um, food class D, you were entitled to chapati, to eggs. In and prison? It, yes, yes, in prison, at least in detention. It was at that time. Okay. And so we went to court and said we, we demand also to be given food class A, yes. class D, although uh, we were Africans. Sued the government for chapati in Amaya. That's right. <laughs> and for chapati, and of course, why? <laughs> Would you rather eat bad food in the prison mm -hmm. or good food in the prison? I'd rather be free. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying in prison. Yes, yes. Not yes. when you are free. Uh, when definitely. you are free, you eat what you want. Definitely. And you so, have brushed the law. You, sorry for interrupting, but you have brushed the law uh, with two presidents in Kenya from Mze Jomo Kenyatta. From Mze Jomo Kenyatta. Uh, what, with what, Mze Jomo Kenyatta? Was, what was the trouble? Yes. I think the trouble was that. Um, after we got independence, yes. our leaders decided that uh, that independence, they all, uh, it meant uh, self-rule only. Yes. yes. That once we had people black as we are in power, yes. that was enough. That's the, what independence was all about. But some of us started arguing, although we had been given a huru, yes. we did not have freedom. Yes. We did not have democracy. Yes. And you could self-rule would be empty unless it was accompanied with democracy, freedom, justice, and all those things that we had missed yes. during the colonial rule. Yes. Uh, so uh, we started agitating that it is not enough to have black rule, we must have justice, we must have democracy, we must have rights. And that was during, and that was during, during Kenyatta's Kenyatta. rule? Yes. And, the subject and Kenyatta did not like this. Yes. Uh, particularly because there was, I think there was a reason why they did not want democracy. Yes. They must have felt that it would get too many people onto the high table. Okay. And they would end up getting less to share among themselves after they, they, if they brought the masses in yes. to share the food with them. Okay. And so the, the subject of our show tonight, yes. uh, before we even continue, is you got in trouble with the Kenyatta government and then the subsequent President Moyes government. So the subject of our show tonight is courage, which can be summarized as why you did not learn from your first experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because... I did, I w say for instance, why did I not learn from, the exp from, from my experience With under the, Kenyatta? Yes, yes, yes. Now in, in, Moe's, in Moe's time. Yes. The reason was simple that although Kenyatta had put, put us into prison and uh, we had suffered for it, we had not achieved what we wanted, which was okay. democracy, justice, equality, employment, mention. We wanted all these things ourselves. Although we had suffered, one, when we came out, we had to decide which way to go. Do we continue struggling for these things because they are not there it's yes. still? Yes. Or do we give up? And we decided that uh, since we are still young and with enough energy, we could continue fighting under Moi. Yes. But if Moi gave us what we wanted, 
we were ready to stop the struggle, but he did not. Moi was your friend. He could have given you what you wanted. He actually asked me. Yes. Uh, he did ask me whether he could have land. In fact, he, he at, offered you land. Yeah, at some at a meeting we had in his Kabrak home. Na ukakata? Uh, I didn't kata that directly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but it turned out that the meeting at Kabarak home, yes. Yes, we are there. We were given very sumptuous breakfast. Yes, uh, we arrived at uh, five in the morning, and then we had a long talk. I was still, uh, I was a few months old as an MP. Yes, Moe himself also was very, uh, very young in the presidency. He actually he helped just to win your seat, as in he had no, 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 he, he didn't. protected your. You from being rigged out. Yeah, correct, yes. correct. In that respect, he assisted my victory, uh, but he didn't help me win. The yes, yes, yes. Thank you for the correction. Well, so after we had talked for a very long time, the question was, was, was he, he asked me wh where I lived, and I told him that uh, I lived in, in town, and he asked me, why do you live in a, in outside your constituency when you should actually be staying with your people in Nakuru North, which was then the constituency that I represented? Yes. I told him I couldn't have stayed up there because my parents didn't have land. I didn't have land either, but I, I could rent a house in town. Uh, so he, he told me that uh, he actually took the phone. He called the DC and told him, a DC called or go. Uh, he asked him whether there was any land in settlement schemes that okay. they were managing then. And they said yes. So he said, look for a piece of land for Mueshmiwa. So uh, we agreed that I would, the following week, I would go to the DC and he would give me land. Yes. You agreed on the size amount, it was supposed to be a surprise. No. We, we <laughs> We agree, you mean with, with, the, with the president? No, th th this was agreed that in th that's, that's what it would be, that okay. after one week I would go there and the DC will have prepared papers for that land, for my ownership of that land. But in between there was a whole week when we, I, when I, we, we were in parliament. And I think in, in the course of our debates there and the contributions to motions and whatever, and the questions we raised, I must have said something the government did not like. Oh, Lord. So when I, uh, I got home over the weekend, I went to see the DC, and I told him that I had come for the land that, uh, you, been promised. that, the, that the president has, had asked I get from from settlement, mm -hmm. and uh, the DC said, unfortunately, Mueshmiwa, that land is not with me anymore. I asked him, where has the land gone to? He said, the person who gave you land has taken it away. Okay. Why? Will you get too much? You went to parliament, you should have kept it quiet, but you continued talking. Yes. <laughs> so the president didn't like it. And so he took back the land. So if you had skived that So thing, it was quite clear that if I needed anything, then I had to toe the line. Okay. I had to speak what the president wanted to hear. So if you had withdrawn those statements, your land would be... Okay. Yes. Now, the, now, President Moy was your friend before yes. all uh, hell broke loose. Yes. He was your friend. Yes, he was. So technically, you had the choice of becoming his friend and uh, building yourself up and a profile and everything, if that was the order of the day. What kept you, uh, Ama, what motivated you uh, to keep um, the craving to go, to, the, to, 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 go, to go back to prison? Why, what, 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 what pushed you? First of all, let me say that uh, the one reason why I had fought for to go to Parliament was because I believed that there would be immunity in Parliament. Before, I had been trying to change things as a journalist, yes. writing a column for uh, Sunday Post. And every time I wrote that piece, the police would come to my house. Yes. 
we even reached a point where they would demand that I open for them. Yes. They would uh, put their guns against the wall, and they would ask me to go to bed. They were also going to bed. Are they? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they, and Good they, night. Yes. <laughs> in the house. Okay. And uh, initially, I didn't get any sleep at all because I was scared they might kill me or something. They, but then we reached a point where I said they can kill me even when I'm awake. As in, they, they had a gun to you until Usingizi came? As in, they had a gun to you? No, no, like they just sat there with, the, with their guns. Lala uh, Mwesimiwa. We reached a point where they took off their coats. Na wakaegemeza mbuduke hapa kwa ukuta. Wakasema wei lala, sisi tunalala, tutakutana asubuhi. Ah, so asubuhi kulipokucha. Kulipo Wa, nikaamuka, nikawamusha, nikawambia tupike ni chai, alafu muende <laughs> and, and, and that, that style also comes out in another, mm, that's, that's uh, psychological torture, right? Yes, yes, And it yes. comes from a story we shared uh, behind the scenes, and that story scared me personally, about Serone. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Would, would you kindly please tell it? Nini uh, Well, <laughs> probably you can tell it better. <laughs> but, but the thing was, psychological yes. torture was very much part of detention. Yes. There was probably more of it than physical torture. Yes, yes, yes. In that particular instance, yes. uh, we had been taken to Mombasa, Shimolatewa prison, yes. for detainees review tribunal. Yes. The one that examined our cases and decided whether we would continue being in detention or we would be let out. Okay. So while we were waiting, for the tribunal to meet, we were kept in our cells. Yes. Then one morning, Moy visited, uh, and we were all silenced. We were told no one was to talk. <coughs> it was only Moy who was supposed to talk. We, uh, no, he was not even talking. Yes. We, he walked quite silently, yes. but we didn't know that uh, he, it was him. We only knew that there were visitors in the area. Yes. The visitors were Moi and an escort of Askaris. Yes. They went up to the block where Serone was locked up. Yes. And uh, he looked Serone through. Was a Serone was an MP for yes. Tinderet. Yes. Uh, but also a detainee at that particular moment. He okay. had been detained together with Shikuku. Yes. And then they found us there. It was my first detention. So uh, when Moi went to. Moi went up to, uh, uh, to the block where Serone was locked up. He looked into that uh, window, the, the wind yes. the window that has bars. Yes. Uh, so he ha and he could see Serone. So he said, Serone Ujambo. Uh -huh. And of course, Serone said, Mzuri. Yes. Ah, these people have not killed you yet. <laughs> so Serone couldn't say anything. Then he said, in his hearing, he told the Askaris, Nini Askari mua kikisha wiu mtu, harudi nyumbani, akiwa hai. Na serunei ya nasikia? Yes. And then he left. Was it Christmas? Because unezafikiria wei ni kuku, because that... <laughs> <laughs> what does that do to you? As in, did he ever share what that did to him as a person? Serunei didn't talk again. For almost the entire time we were in detention, yes, he kept to himself. When you tried to talk to him, he wouldn't answer. I think he was traumatized badly. He believed that these people could come in and, and actually kill him. Anytime. Anytime. And that's where courage comes in. Having seen that, having been to prison before, you still come out and go against the government. Yeah, because it was a question of whether we had been given what the people needed, what we believed Kenyans uh, needed or not. If there was no democracy, if there was no land for the poor, if there was no jobs for young people, uh, if all these things were missing, yes. uh, if we'd, we didn't continue fighting, that would amount to surrender. And we don't believe, we didn't believe in surrender. Remember, some of us, uh, like myself, I had already been to the United States. Yes. 
uh, which was very, was, which, which was great luck for me. And you came back? I had won a scholarship. I had gone there. I thought I had seen heaven on earth, the heaven where I thought we all deserved to stay. Yes. And somewhere along the line of my education, I had decided that it was more relevant fighting for democracy in Kenya than uh, working so hard to get a university education. And so some of us, probably crazy enough, we decided to come back and fight for the unfinished Mau Mau revolution. But in the process... Now, this, this, what drove us was conviction, the belief that as human beings and as Ma Mandela would put it, every person, uh, if you don't have it, must have something to live for and to die for. Okay. And we were quite willing to die for what we thought was right. Okay. But we were not coming home to die. We were coming home to win a struggle. What we didn't know is that this struggle would take a very long time. Me, I thought that uh, after coming back, it would be a year or two, and Kenyatta's government would be over. Yes. And we would take charge of things and make Kenya a heaven on earth. Okay. But the struggle itself turned out to be a lot more difficult. Because apart from the Askaris um, visiting me every day, I wrote an article. I also got detained many, 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 many times in police cells. Yes. They would come for us. Uh, no job was, uh, was, was we, uh, we were not getting jobs. Uh, from the people who we thought should give us jobs. And, and when it comes to uh, the torture and what people go through when they come for you, zile mambo tunasikianga ni ukweli? As in, kufinywa? Yes. Yes, watu ufinywa. Unafinywa kabisa? Eh, na ukifinywa unafaa useme kitu ama you just apologize. Ukisema pole wana kuwacha ama wana... Apana ukisema, ukisema, unasema pole au unakubali. Una, una oh, unafinyo una ndiyo useme ndiyo sasa wa nimekubali. Nime au unasema sisemi tena. Oh, ukisema, au taongea tena. Si taongea tena, basi unaachwa. Unaambiwa hile imebaki, ukienda kuongeza maneno, hata hiyo itaenda. <laughs> uh, na bado unarudi tena kuongea. Bado unarudi tena kuongea. Bado unarudi tena kuongea. It was conviction. It was ideology. It was, uh, yeah, even something worse than that. What so, is Kwa mfano, uh, the lady comrades that we had. Yes. Mtu walikuwa anapigwa, anashikwa, anapigwa, anapigwa, chupa inaletwa, inavunjwa, lafu. Oh, Lord. And, sasa, you, you, you went through all that. Mm. Alafu, you came and vied uh, for a parliamentary seat again and won. And so that means you were in government. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, did you get to interact with your torturers? Uh, did you get uh, a time for sweet revenge? Did you get to <laughs> meet them? Ule jama wa playa, sa huku muita mkutama. Apana, they hide, they run away. They keep their distance. Okay. But when, when you meet them, uh, you, you, you really don't want to be exacting revenge. Okay. You are trying to say that you are a different person from them. Okay. So if you are going to do against them exactly what they have done with you yes. or they have done to you, then what is the difference between you and them? But now here's a question of... President Moy has been, uh, his government was accused of so many atrocities, right? Yes, yes. And people still complain even on his passing uh, right now. But then, uh, it brings the question of, he did not, I believe, um, from what I can imagine, President Moy, hakuna maali alifinya mtu, Apana. himself. Uh, himself. So, uh, hakuna maali, he probably, uh, someone lost his life uh, on his, as in, on the president's account, at LSM, maybe, maybe he gave an order. Does he bear any responsibility? I think if you give an order, 
that torture be exacted, then of course you, you, you must bear responsibility for that order, even for the act, for whatever act that results from the order, you are ultimately responsible. Okay. That's why they say the buck stops with the president. Okay. You give orders, you give instructions, other people go, they do what you have asked them to do. Uh, you cannot disown them, uh, although of course they talk about plausible deniability. deniability. Okay. But the truth is that if, if democracy is to be observed, yes. and if you have a, a functioning democratic system, the president must always take responsibility for what happens when he is in charge. Aya, I believe uh, you have done well for yourself. You are a hardworking Kenyan. I believe you've uh, been a member of parliament a few times. But do you believe you would do better if you bow down to uh, the powers that be from the times of uh, President uh, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta? Do you think you would be among the elite, among the richest families uh, for Mm. I, think I, I think I could have gone that way because I re remember after the elections of 1979, yes. I was called to Gigi's home, Gigi Karaoke. Yes. You may, I don't know whether you know him. I know him, yes. But he called us to his home. And when we went there, we found that uh, people were actually sharing seats in the cabinet. Okay. And Gigi told me that he had been sent uh, to call for me by, by Moy to offer me a seat in the cabinet uh, if I wanted. Uh, he said, actually, the language he used was that they were going to give me an extra forum from which to fight their enemies. Okay. So, uh, but I told them that much as I wished I could join the cabinet. I, when during the campaigns, there are questions I had promised to raise for my constituents, which I could not raise if I was in the government. So I asked that they give me one year of raising questions for my people. And subsequently, when the questions were finished, then I could join the cabinet. Of course, uh, we stayed one year, and I was still asking questions. Yes. Uh, and more questions. And it looked clear that uh, they were not happy with the question. They wanted to tell me, you shut up so that we can give you that job we promised. And, but I was not about to keep quiet, and they okay. knew it. So in so some kind of settled yes. that we agreed that uh, we couldn't actually join. I couldn't join, join. them. And if I didn't join them, then of course I would have to forfeit whatever benefits. privileges that would have come with a job like a seat in the cabinet. So in short, you were given an option uh, to choose between a cabinet post, lakini uh, ukachagua kufinywa. So, because <laughs> that's what, do you, do you ever regret those decisions? Because maybe that's how this country works. No, that's not how this country must work. Okay. It probably it is the way it works, but it's not it. It is not the way it must work. Okay. Uh, so I still believe in the possibility of change. Things can be changed, but that question you are raising about myself having to deciding to go that particular direction despite the dangers. Yes. Sometimes you keep your distance for survival. For instance. Uh, there was a time that uh, I got a message from Kaliuk Chotora yes. that uh, they had taken me to prison hoping to use force or to use torture to silence me, but I wouldn't keep silent. Okay. So he told me, now that we cannot tame you with the prison, we are going to kill you. We will break you like a louse. Naona chawa. The, he, he sent you a message? Yes. Okay. And uh, of course, I, there is something I felt to the extent that uh, the message was serious. They really were actually planning to do something like an execution of me. Yes. And 
I called, I went home, and I called my parents and uh, my wife, and we had a family council. We talked about the danger that was implied in the threat, and we decided that uh, the best thing to do for, for the time being was to go into exile. Yes. So we organized for me to leave Nakuru to go to Uganda, uh, where I stayed for some time until Askaris who were being sent to fix us got too many. And Museveni's government felt they could not protect us. So they approached some countries and asked them to give us asylum, yes. which they did, some of us to know in Norway and others to Sweden. So uh, you, when, if, if when you are involved in a struggle like this, you are all the time making decisions as to whether to stop or to go on. And uh, the temptation to stop sometimes can be very strong. Okay. Because kwa mfano kama umengolewa nguvu zako unashindwa what is there left to fight for? Okay. But, but then on the other hand you ask kwa sababu washangoa nitaachwa na kuna kitu kingine cha kupoteza. Or oh, transformer, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, so technically, during that era, uh, during the struggle, what you're saying is the kind of, uh, Ama, the only promise the government seemed to be serious on delivering was the promise to kill someone. Uh, probably uh, that and more. If they could do that by promising to build a road and follow through like that, they, the government would have been very effective. The fact is, the government that we had after independence, as I explained, yes. was a government without freedom. It was a dictatorship. Okay. And I think that the dictatorships really don't, they don't know how to do things differently. The only things that they know how to do is torturing and keeping their people down. Yesterday we had a show, um, uh, a TV show, where we had uh, um, where we had people who had served with Moi yes. uh, in the panel, and I was very surprised when uh, somebody said that they had discussed in a government and agreed that uh, democracy cannot come to a country that is poor. Uh, de development cannot come to a country that is poor. So they had decided that uh, to make sure that to allow, uh, to, al to allow development, they had, uh, they had actually to deny people democracy uh, until the country was reached such a level of development yes. that people would be able to understand it. And I was shocked by that judgment because it's something I suspected could have happened Yes. But I didn't know it, that it had actually been talked about and agreed upon okay. that you, democracy had to be kept away as a means of developing the country. Okay. Because if you look at most countries, it is not true that they are developed because they were dictatorships. There are many countries that have developed very uh, successfully, like Scandinavian countries, uh, even when they do not have any form of dictatorship at all. Yes. They have a perfectly well-functioning uh, democracy okay. and economy that uh, ensures that everybody eats, everybody has shelter, everybody okay. has clothes, shoes, and medicine. Okay. Before we let you go, uh, in summary, uh, questions from uh, members of our audience. Yes. Uh, if you can just respond quickly in the interest of time. Uh, one, was the struggle worth it? Uh, number two, comparative. Let me answer. Okay. Was the struggle worth it? Yes. It has always been worth it. It is. Continuous. You are to our jali. Imagine <laughs> if, if you lose an election. <laughs> now, kumbuke vile ulifinyo na watu waja kupigia kura. How does that make you, you feel? You see, you see, whatever, whatever we have today was fought for by people who are around and by others who are not around because. Okay. Uh, we are building on, uh, uh, as, as, as we live our lives yes. today, we must know 
that it is upon a, fo uh, a foundation of other people's struggle, the freedom yes. fighters, yes, yes, the yes. nationalists, who fought to remove the white man from the country. Yes. Uh, if you enjoy that, you incur a debt. If you enjoy the results or the results of Mau Mau struggle, yes. you incur a debt if okay. you, you enjoy those. And that debt has to be repaid by what you do for those who will come behind you so that, they, uh, so that they can also bequeath uh, the struggle to the generation after them. Okay. This is how our country moves forward. And would you say, and this is a question from a member of our audience, would you say that the struggle, I'll rephrase it, the struggles that you guys fought through, how you, um, you went against the government and how you countered them with uh, your side, um, what you believe in, is that comparative to what uh, General Miguna is doing now? Or well, how did they have dealt with Miguna then? Because the government... I didn't, the government you see, we, are, we, we, are, we were with Mith, uh, Miguna in, in detention. Oh, you were with Miguna? Yeah, Miguna was... Oh, that explains... Miguna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it explains it. Okay. Uh, but Miru, uh, Miguna has been in prison. He has suffered for change. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And uh, he is quite... He is, that he is willing to continue fighting is a statement that as long as he has not uh, gotten what he has been fighting for, yes. the fight is not going to stop. And I think it is quite reasonable. You as long him? as he is asking for the right things. He was in a different prison. Oh, you weren't with him in detention? No, we so were, but he was uh, imprisoned oh. also. So where did you come at? Alifanyua Mambo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Okay. I hope. Some people survive this. Uh, it is sometimes you have to be unlucky to be picked for it. No, because no. it's done as an example. Oh, mimi, mimi. Oh, to others. Wakati unafanyua hapa na wawa wanatazama. Oh, wanasikia. Sasa wanajua kwamba wasipo T, watapata kile ambacho. Can you choose to learn from someone else's example? Ama ni lazima mtu wakucha, they chagua mtu wakufinya at random. Can I say, wanachagua, I learn from what the uyu wa mtuwa. Wanaweza kuchagua ile mtu ambaye anaubishi. Zaidi. Sasa una... Oh, kama wei ni mpole, they have no problem. Yeah, they, but sometimes they just come for you also. But I'll say, mimi yata, mi yata tutasumbwa, and I'll say. Nitasema <laughs> nini? Nitasema. Nikiona plus. Hey. And itakuandikia zote. Nitasema, umekubali kila kitu, hey, umekubali everything. kila kiapo, na fulani, na fulani, alifanya yu. Oh, ni hizo vitu ujafanya? Ndiyo, hata utasema kwa mama kwa mlikuwa na ae. <laughs> Mtu anasema mpaka mama yake na hapo hapo. Eh, hata hakuepo, lakini atasema. That happened. Yes. You snitch on people who are not there. Yes. Then how did they know you have told the truth then? No, it doesn't matter. At least they will be able to say that we have caught so many people and therefore we are doing the job you gave us to do. Wewe ulisema nani mwenye yako? Hapana, mimi si kusema. Ulikaa ngumu. Nilikaa ngumu. Mimi naye nikakaa miaka mingi 13 wakati Nani? wengine wanakaa mwaka mmoja miwili mitatu so uki, ukichagua ni kwenda njia hiyo yes. ujue na wewe utakaa pale zaidi ya wengine okay na kukaa mwaka mmoja miwili mitatu mine si mchezo uliacha mtoto tumboni unampata sasa anakwenda class 5 